it might not come as much as a surprise to people out there looking at me and hearing my story. I quite like a smoke. Mm-hmm. And in Thailand, it's mm. a bit dodgy. But back then, there was a website that if you put where you were in the world, it would tell you where you could go and do yeah and pick some something up. And we did this when we were on travelling round because we were there. We were doing a yoga, we were doing massage, we're having a little smoke, chilling out on a night time. Neither of us are big drinkers. Mm-hmm. It's our our way of enjoying ourselves. So we've been travelling around for ages, and we'd got down. We've got our little beach huts with the hammocks outside and. When we've been travelling around, it'd been lots of groups of just couples together, men and women travelling around, and me and Martin were trying, was like, you know, I like you, Martin, and this view's lovely, but I wish you were a more attractive woman. That was <laughs> and we got got to this, this place on the, on the island, and it was actually, oh, God, there's, it's not all just couples. There are people there, and people are chatting away, and, oh, there's a full moon. No. Half moon, half moon whatever, party. yeah, yeah half they, moon they have every moon. variation. Yeah, yeah. there's one every week, moon dance. Yeah, 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 that's what I learned quickly. Yeah, oh, we'll go out tonight and you know, a chance to put on a pop pair of jeans and a proper t shirt instead of a shirt, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to, just to yeah. make a bit of an effort. We bought some t shirts for Christmas presents for each other in um, um, Vietnam, so I oh, will wear those. And we're sat at Martin's Beach Hot and I'm having a smoke. And I look up, and about five metres away from me, there's a policeman. I'm like, so Martin's in his room. I'm like, oh, hello, Mr. Policeman. Like mm, that. Mm, yeah. mm. Oh, hello, Mr. Policeman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and trying to get Martin, who was stoned on his bed, his bloke's coming, and... We, we thought we were lucky because we had rolling tobacco mm-hmm. and skins on the side. And it was like, what's that? I was like, oh, no, it's just tobacco. It's just... Before we knew it, there were police everywhere and they were in Martin's mm. thing looking for... And he was like, oh, no, I've just been drinking. And the lucky thing is he had... Well, it made no difference. He had an empty whiskey bottle in his room because he can flare, like, cocktail waiter type thing. Oh, yeah. And he was just practising doing that. Like, oh, no, I've just had whiskey. I've just had whiskey. Mm. No, no, no. Looking around, and they found a little packet with a little bit of weed in it. Just a bit of tie stick stuff. Just tie stick, yeah. yeah. Not even touched the edge, really, compared to stronger stuff. But, you know, you're away, you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, yeah. Didn't think anything of it. Then they took me back to my room, searched out, there was nothing in there. Then handcuffs are on us. Oh, wow. So did you not get a chance to negotiate a bit of a back back, a back door entry? Hindsight's a brilliant thing. Because we hadn't got we battered. We didn't know what was going on. And we thought, oh, took us to handcuff, taken through the campsite, everyone, look, you know what I mean? And mm. you're like, oh, no. Look at them daft phalangs. Yeah, I, I'd like to put it. Like, I've never had any run-ins with the... The only run-in I'd ever had with the police before was when I was about 13 or 14. I was riding my bike home one night without any lights on it. And this is how long ago it is and how old it is. The local beat Bobby was in the van, mm. saw me, told me to get off my bike and let my back tyre ho- down and walk my bike home. That's the only... Policing's changed since then. I'd, I'd, so, um, I'd, I'd had since then. You know what I mean? I'd never any in, in, in any trouble or anything. So handcuffed, bundled into the back of a pickup so truck. That's a scary moment for you, I imagine. It, it, what? it was just bizarre. It's like, well, how can they, we're going to a full moon? What? This, you know what I mean? It always, when, you, when you're somebody who smokes marijuana, and, has, and I've done for years and years and years, you kind of take it for granted, I think. I'm probably speaking fairly for most <laughs> smokers that you're even breaking the law because it just seems so um, innocuous and um, it's clearly a substance that is, um, you know... It's just there. It's a fucking plant that makes people just generally nicer and calmer, generally, yeah, who yeah, people who use it yeah, over time. That's it. So the idea that all of a sudden you you like faced with like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Especially in a place like Thailand. I've had similar similar stories. Well, that's it. So then we're swept off to the police station. We pick an interpreter up on the way down. We go down to the police station and then we're hauled into this room with the bloke who's in charge. And at this point we go, oh, if, if there's a fine to play, we can pay you the fine. 
too late paperwork started. Yes, that's what they say. Like, yeah. Shit. So we were claiming at this point, oh, it's just rollies. We don't know what that is. Took us to do a piss test. I did mine. It came up straight away. Did it? And Martin's took probably, it felt like, <laughs> 10 minutes to go, oh, fuck it, he's going to get away with it. It's just me going on my own. <laughs> this is bad. I was so pleased when that line came, because we both were. Yeah. And it's like, oh, good God. Mm. Came up. So then, it's obvious we've done it. We're put into a cell with about five other blokes, toilet in the centre. Are and they stuff. all Thai? Any foreigners? Yeah, yeah, just me and Martin, everyone else Thai. Martin's going to sleep, goes, ah. They're just on wooden floors, these are. He's got stung by a scorpion. Oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, what? we should get the, the people to help us. The people in the cell are just laughing yes. at us. And, like, luckily there was a guy in there who was quite cool who was like a trekking guide, mm -hmm. and he just squeezed it, pulled it out. I was like, oh, that sort, you're all right, don't worry. <laughs> wow. And, and that was it. So we were in, say it was a Friday night, we were in there. And just didn't know what was going on. So were you, were you, were you, did you manage to be calm? Were you, did you yeah, you... luckily, I, like, it was what the hell's going on at this point. It was like, it was still, well, are we going to get out? Are we not? Did they you know, manhandle you and sh no, shout you and stuff? Or were no they... shouting, no. perfectly polite. And then we were in the cell and this Thai woman and what turned out late to be an American guy turned up. And the question you've just asked me, was it just, um, were there any other or foreigners in the thing? It wasn't, it was just me, Martin, and three or four Thais. And this Thai lady comes and goes, which of the Falang? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, th 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 that'd be us too. <laughs> but it, it turns out that she was from a local Christian church and they come out and they help people and so on. And she was amazing. She worked as an interpreter for us. She she helped out. Um, we she got us to call the embassy. Spoke to the bloke from the embassy. It was her who told us that we were going to be incarcerated, as she put it. How much weed did you have? I'll tell you at the end. Right. I'll tell you at the okay. end. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it all ties in quite nicely. Um, so, yeah, it, it, what was I saying? She, she, she's, she's helping you uh, out. She's, she's helping mediating us out. And yeah, she's, she's telling you that you're, you're going to be incarcerated. Incarcerated unless we can come up with, I think it was two grand a piece for bail that you had to pay by. And it was like, we had the money in our bank account, but you can only take out 100 quid a day or something. Oh, God, like. yeah. So we couldn't get it out. And the only other alternative was phoning back to the UK to family saying... Get someone to kind of wire it. Or yeah, whatever. and it was like, I don't really want to phone my mum and dad saying that... Yeah. I'm in jail, I'm in mom. jail for drugs in a foreign country. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. My mum and dad are straight as anything, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it, it wouldn't... They know what I do, but they don't approve sort of thing. Yeah. And I mean, they know about it now, mm. but it, it's... It, it, yeah, it's not that, the phone that, call you want to make, That is wasn't going to happen. Mm. And luckily... Martin's very laid back. I'm quite laid back. I'm like, right, we're just going to have to go for it. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, the lucky thing is, <laughs> at the end of this, I haven't ended up with a criminal record and I didn't get bummed. And right. they were the only two things that I was... And literally, I said yeah. that to Martin. And I was like, if we're going... That's God, don't yeah. let them yeah, because yeah. you see, locked up abroad, all these well, prisons. It's the classic cliche, yes, yeah. horror story yeah, for, it, for especially for somebody who isn't a, a necessarily a criminal. No, you know, well, somebody who's it. just unsuspected. Like, oh my god, it's yeah, all where, the where worst things are going to happen. Copper come from, sort of thing. Yeah. So we'd had talks with her. We'd had talks with the bloke in the embassy and stuff, and even down to when we before we went to court, they came back and there were proper. Um, like lay your hands on, say prayers and stuff. So we had this mm. American bloke saying, kind of pray for it, with his hand on his, our head, serve them and take Jesus them, God. Christ, like, what that the hell? That me even more a, worried, that. And gave us a Bible and stuff like that, which stitched us up when we walked in the prison with a Bible. All the Christians thought we were real Christians and yeah. loved us. <laughs> so we were like, well, we're not going. I mean, we can't phone home. 
we're going to have to go to the court. So we went to the court, and when we were at the court, the copper that arrested us was there and was like, oh, you're going for bail, yeah? And I was like, no, we've not got the money. But like, you'll have to go to prison. It's like, yeah, we know. Went straight to mine. Oh, but you want bail? It's like, no, we're going, we'll, whatever's coming to us, we'll just We're going to give it. it a shot, mate. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> Because they want, because they'd get a, a payoff at each level. If oh, we'd, yeah. And because yeah. then you need a solicit. Oh, my brother-in-law's a solicitor. He can help you out. Yeah. So they would. What we're getting nothing out of him. So we were remanded for twelve days. It's done twelve days at a time. So we thought, oh, it's twelve days. We'll be out of here. We we late. So we we were remanded. We were then put into the holding cells. And then we were taken from the court to the prison in the back of a Bedford rascal van, it looked like, with no, with bars on the window. You're just pushed in the back. There was no seat belts. You just crammed in. Yeah. Driven to the prison doors. Which part of Thailand are you in at the moment? Is this Ko Chang? It's, we were on the mainland, so Chat Province. Okay. Which I think that's right. I might be wrong. I'm dreadful right. at it. So, yeah, we were driven to the prison and I was just, what the hell is going to happen here? Mm. Drove us in, we got out of the van, there was probably about 10 of us. Only me and Martin were Westerners. Opened the gate to let us in, and it, it was one of those, oh, thank God, because it was a Sunday, so it was their day off, and there were people just out exercising. You know, they had a boxing team, so they're all training. training. That game where they have like a little wick of football and they kick it over a badminton net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it's like, called. I think they call it, is it just... Is it football? I think they refer to it as. I'm not sure. It's yeah. like volleyball with but Yeah, feet. yeah, feet. Yeah. So they have a team for that. And they had a Bulls team as well. So they're all practicing because within Thai prisons, they have like matches against other prisons. Yeah. And say you're a really good Thai boxer and you can fight your way. You can get out quicker and stuff yeah, like that. It's really right, good. Yeah. 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 So there's all people doing that. But we're just, well, when we, we first go in, we're told to strip to our undies. And then we're given, like, the Thai fisherman pant short type mm. things mm -hmm. and a top to put on and our clothes are taken away. And we've been given some bread and jam off the Christian woman and all the people have pinched that off as well. Just <laughs> take, take what you want. Because in the prison, the main... The main the, the, the security is done by... I think they were called Commodores. I think they're people that have been in the Navy or something like that and then go into the prison service. The outside of the administration is done by them, but the inside administration in the prison is run by the prisoners. So as you come to the end, people that are on long sentences, so like opium dealers and people like that that have been in for 10, 15 years, as they get to their last five years, mm -hmm. they'll do the admin of the prison on the inside. Oh, okay. So um, they got one of the guys who was on the boxing team, which was good for us because you've got someone who you know who's a boxer he was a diving instructor on it so he had good english and okay. he was called tom i don't think that was his thai name but called tom he was on the boxing team and he was told to look out for us and look after us so when we first got in there on the first well yeah we first got in he took us for food and stuff like that when we first walked in there i stuck out like a sore thumb because martin's got dark hair Dark eyes, quite olive complexion. Everyone's Thai, Cambodian, no other Westerners in there. I turn up with blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm. I'm just some sort of real freak in there. And like, mm. and you'll know yourself in Thailand. We're, we're taught not to stare at something that's different. Whereas they... Oh, yeah. they come through and have a good yeah, old look, so don't touch, they? Like, yeah. Are you real? Like, touching yeah, you. yeah. So the first night we were in there... Oh, so we went in, we got some food, but there were meat in it with vegetarians, so we were just eating bits of rice. Everyone was following us around the place. It was really weird. But n Any confrontation? No, or no, no, just intrigue. And mm. I mean, I think the lucky thing is that they're quite into slapstick humour over there, and I'm quite clumsy. So after I'd fallen over a couple of times, <laughs> I thought I was a comedy genius, so I was all right. <laughs> So, so that worked out really well. And the good thing is Martin sort of quite fit into it and did a bit of the training with the boxing guys, got mm. us a bit of respect there. I did a little bit of massage on the boxing coach who had been in for shooting two people oh, and okay. stuff like that. Did, did they give you a nickname? They're normally good at giving you nicknames. Uh, uh, no, no, not so much. Oh, well, they couldn't... I, no, no. no. Not, well, not to our faces anyway, thinking no. about okay. it. I'm trying to think now. 
But uh, yeah, so Martin did a bit of training with the boxing people and stuff like that. But the first night we were in a cell probably with 30, 40 people. And we had, me and Martin shared the same floor space, like the floor space for two people, one person. Mm. But two of us were on it. And we were in that cell for two nights with um, Tom and like loads of people. But then, because there was one cell where more people spoke English and it was a cell of 11 people. And those 11 people were our lady boys. Oh, So it was okay. me and Martin and 11 lady boys. Okay, <laughs> but they could all speak a decent bit they of English. They could all speak a decent bit of English. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. sexy man. It is weird when you're trying to get to sleep and you're being told you've got beautiful blue yeah. eyes and you're stuff just always like telling that. you how wonderful yeah, you look. Yeah, or can I comb your hair for you? You're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, and the, the funny thing is there was one of the girls, because that's... Mm-hmm. Uh, and how they were and it's funny have you ever seen um, Dodgeball the film yes do you, fantastic. do you know the one with the mono brow yes uh, she looked like that and she was called Joy and she was miserable as sin <laughs> you can't write it <laughs> you, can you just honestly but like they looked out for us quite well and mm. I mean we were in that prison for 28 days in the end because what happens is you're remanded for 12 days and then after that 12 days, if they're not ready for you, you can be remanded for another 12 and another 12 and it keeps going. So we'd been in there and we were told that oh, they'll send off the weed that they found and it'll be tested. We've been in there for 11 days and we get this, oh, someone wants to talk to you. It's like, no one knows we're here. I went through and it was the copper that arrested us and he was like, oh, good news. Um, I sent your sample off yesterday. It's like, you've had it for 11 days mm. and you sent it off yesterday and it mm. t- but it's good so it'll be back soon it's not a big amount won't be a big problem and the bloke from so I, I can't believe we've been in here for 12 days <laughs> I could he, have been, he, he hasn't, even done he hasn't bothered oh, sending it off yeah. yet um, I had my what would it be my 34th birthday in there Oh, did you have a little party? <laughs> well, actually, we got some money through for the first time, like our money sorted out. So I think we had um, dried, uh, yeah, dried bananas and um, mm. soy milk with honey in them, and that tasted like the elixir of the gods because yeah. we'd just been drinking water out of the thing that tasted like mud, yeah, and just yeah. not particularly good food. But so it's the days were quite hard, as in. You're out in the sun a lot. They'd let you out. I think it was about half past four, five in the morning. Did you panic at any point, Simon? Did you? Were you? Did you? Were you and Martin like? Did you get freaked out at any point, or were you Need, kind of? Um, we had up and down days and up and down times, but never at the same time. We never blamed. No one blamed each other. Mm-hmm. It was just we're in this situation. We're safe at the moment. You know, like I was saying, as long as people kept away from me. In that way, mm. I'm all right. I can get on with most people, you know what I mean? And it was, yeah, there were times you felt really down. Just be. Did you get any kind of legal advice? Did you get to speak to anybody? Well, did we, it, we spoke to the, the bloke from the embassy, came to see embassy. us, and more or less called us a, a dickhead. I mean, it's your own fault. What were you thinking of? But in yeah. a nice kind of way, yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, and he brought us some books and stuff, and he just explained what would happen. And it was him that kept saying, oh, well, it can keep doing it for 12 days up until a point. And then it'll get sorted with what will happen is you'll go to the courts, you'll get a fine, um, you'll be told you've got to be deported. So they'll stamp your passport with deported. You'll be held in some place in Bangkok while they can sort a flight out for you. Then you'll be sent home. So we that's what we were expecting to happen. But it's that it's the time and it's the not knowing what's happening and things like that. Mm. In the meantime, we've had the woman from the, the the church. She came to visit us, and like I say, she was lovely. She was really nice. But like she came with two other Thai people, and when we went into the visiting room, it's probably from your bookcase to this back wall here is an open area, and then there's like a mesh like fence and the visitors sit on one side you've got all that gap 
mesh and we sit on the other side. So you're shouting backwards and forwards. Yeah, that's, a, that's a distance. But then there's three or four other stalls with other people in it. So there's like a woman next door, she's crying, her young fella's in, in prison and she's all upset and can't. The next one along, kids have come to visit, they're climbing up, <laughs> climbing up the, the fences and stuff like that. And they're explaining what we've got to do to us. And I think we'd either send a letter or we'd explain to, it's a good thing to send a letter to the, like the person who's in charge of Chat Province, I think it was, saying we're really sorry, we didn't expect this, but it's not, you know, that'll help you, your, your cause and stuff like that. So we're dealing with all of that. And then she was like, oh, do you know the hymn Amazing Grace? And I'm like, oh, I think we used to sing it at school, but I can't remember the words. Don't worry, I have them for you here. So it gives copies to the um, the guard that's watching us. He looks at can't mm. can't read English. I think don't think it gives it to us. And so come on then, let's sing. And honestly, I was at one side like this, and Martin was at the other <laughs> side like we couldn't look at each other because if we caught, all right, that was it. We'd have just lost it. Just singing Amazing Grace, trying not to, to laugh. And you've got woman next door crying, kids climbing yeah, up the thing. chaos. And it is, it's just like, how have we You're ended You're in your own movie, here? aren't you? Yeah, and honestly, it was like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like you say, it was scary. Mm. But there wasn't a day go by without us laughing. You know what I mean? There'd be things that would happen to be really funny, you know, whether it's bashing me head off something or... People hear horror stories about Thailand, um and jail, and Thai jail, and, um, you know, the idea that your liberty and your um, your con- your ability to have a, a legal position that you understand that's just, yeah. that's, you know, in any... Like, there's a lot of stories where you just you do, do what we want with you. We just yeah. leave you there. Well, so. that was it. I mean, the, the classic line that when my mum finally found out and... She had to go at my sister for not saying so. He could have ended up losing a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> well, he do. You hear yeah, well, stories, that, that's the you? thing. And to be so fair, he did well to kind of keep. You know, if it had been the other way round and two little Thai lads had ended up in a prison in the northeast of England, mm. they'd have had everything start. You know what I mean? It wouldn't mm. have been as a ni- nice a thing. But they were intrigued with us. Everyone wanted to learn or. You'll find you. You'll know this yourself when you're out there. You get everyone. They'll come up to you and they'll know three or four stock sentences. Mm. And they'll Damn co- boy! Yeah, they'll, they'll come <laughs> up and they'll talk to you. They'll be oh, and then you start having a, com- a conversation with them. And oh, and it was the same in India. And, and you think I'm a comedy genius. They think I'm so funny. And then you realize, oh no, they can't stand a word I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'd be like that. And I can remember like we'd walk around the yards in different areas because there were like two blocks at the bottom, a football pitch in the middle. And then blocks at the top and paths all the way round. So we'd just walk round and round and round and then change it <laughs> for a change of scenery, change direction, walk the other way round. But it was better for us because like, everyone went to work during the week on Saturdays and Sundays. They got the day off and that was a bit harder because they were around all the time and mm. in your face looking... Did you have any grief of anybody? Did you, was, Not nothing no. at all. Nothing at all. We like I say we were we were really really lucky. Um, like they realised we didn't eat meat um, and sorted out sort of well, it's just plates of cold rice most of the time. Um, um, we didn't have to eat in the dining room. We could go into the office where the long termers had been um, that were running the place now, but okay. legitimately running it yeah. sort of thing. And you get the same every morning when you come down. Ah, oh, you bum bum lady boy last night. It's like, <laughs> like you're in the cell. You were literally watching me last night. You know yeah, what I mean? And yeah, yeah, yeah. when it, my friend Martin was walking, ah, oh, they always thought he's called Marcel for some reason. Ah, oh, Marcel, and because he was doing the boxing. Oh, you go to Bangkok, be boxing champion yeah. every day. The same thing. And I'd get, hey, blondie. And like when you're all right, that's fine. But when you're having a bit of one of those downers, you're like, oh God, where am I? How did I end up here? So. It went backwards and forwards a couple of times to the court and then we actually found out from one of the lady boys because they, with them having better English, they worked on reception, the main reception for the place coming in and out. Like, oh, you're going to court tomorrow? (laughs) Oh, are we? (laughs) Mm. First thing we knew about it. So in the morning, we were called to go 
down to the place where they put the leg irons on. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I've literally... Explain a leg iron for someone. So it's, it's a big ring that goes around your foot and it's attached with um, chain to another big ring and it's the rings that are a bit like, do you know, a key ring? Mm. So you put your foot through it and then they put it in a machine and they squash it and it's not rubbing against your skin, but it goes around. So you've got these big, heavy chains on your mm. on your feet, so you can't run off. And they use it as punishment in the prison. If people have been fighting, they'll make them yeah. wear them as well. Mm. And um, but they put them on when you get to prison, so you can't run off. But they were nice to us. They gave us the slightly longer, shinier chains than the Cambodians <laughs> that had the short, rusty chains. Go, but, doesn't sound a lot, but goes a long way. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we go. Um, oh. Before we get any further, so when we'd got busted, they'd found some weed, but Martin had split it into two, and there was another little tin in his rucksack that they didn't find, but our rucksacks were at the police station, and we knew they'd got that bit of weed, we knew there was another tin in it. We didn't know how much was in it, but we knew it was in there, mm. and like all the way through, we're like, if they're they going to find they're that. They're going to find, but it's like, we'll just keep quiet. We won't say anything. We won't say anything. And that was it. When they said there was someone from the police to see us. You thought that that was what it was. Oh, God, they found it and that's it. We're going to be in trouble. But we kept kept quiet about that. So, yeah, we were called. We had these chains put round our, our um, ankles, back into the rascal van, back to the um, court. <laughs> Mm. And luckily, our, our Thai friend, she was there to do the interpretation for us. And we went into the um, the court and backwards and forwards. And the guy, the judge talks in Thai to, to our interpreter. And he looks really shocked and sounds quite cross. I'm like, oh, shit, what's happened here? And he was like, you know, you could have got bail. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we knew it. We could have done, but we didn't want to phone home. And he was like, oh, are you? You not want your mummy to know you? And yeah, like, straight on get, it. And he's laughing with us, you know, yeah. chains around her ankles, handcuffed to my mate, making the judge laugh. And it was just like, all oh, right. Um, I went through and it was like, um, right, it's a, it's a 2,000 baht fine. So, oh. so what's that, 20, 30 quid or something like that? 2,000 baht, yeah, probably, I, I don't know now, probably about yeah. 30, 40 quid. Yeah. yeah, and he was like, ah, um, but you don't have to pay that because you get 200 baht a day for being in prison, so you've cleared your debt. So we didn't have to pay anything. And they were, oh, where's your passport? And I'm like, oh, it's at the embassy. Um with um, the ambassador, he'd come down to see us and stuff, and th they'd got them. So we've got to pick it up in Bangkok, and then oh, some more talking in Thai about visa, and it just went very quiet. And they went, "All right, you'll be able to go." So we go down to our cell, and then the interpreter comes back and goes, "For a Christian woman, she was quite spot on for doing this." She was like, "Oh, they." Um, they think on your passport that you've still got a visa to be in Thailand that because it had expired because we'd asked <laughs> we'd only got two weeks we wanted mm. a month and we got a month mm. and he's like don't say anything your passports are up there all you'll have to do is do your visa run and just pay your overstay which <laughs> yeah fine fine yeah yeah we'll do that so um we're in the cells and how it works in Thailand, you've got to be released by the person that arrested you or something like that. Okay. And because we were on the mainland and we'd been in prison, but we'd been caught on the island, the copper that caught us was on the island and he'd been getting pissed up and missed the ferry. So we've been released... This is the maddest Martin said he ever saw me. We've been released, uh, no, no criminal record, mm -hmm. done nothing, you know. Yeah. And but because the copper had been on the piss, he couldn't come and sign us out till the next day. It's like right in the cells at the local police station. So I went back to the prison, got our clothes, 
They took us back, to, and this was the worst place out of the lot, and it was only one night. We didn't even go in the cell. You're in the corridor outside, and there were, like, people in there with their kids that had been caught coming over the border from, like, Cambodia and stuff like that, rats jumping around everywhere. Oh dear, yeah. Just absolutely hideous and there's like one point Mike said I thought oh you, you were going to bend the bars there Simon because like, we shouldn't even be in here I'm stuck in it and, and it was like I'll be here at nine o'clock in the morning for you it turned up about sort of ten o'clock or something like that real oh, how are you when I come to England we'll go and see the football just chatting all oh, your bags are here and we're like looking through and they blatantly stole stuff from our like shorts and stuff out of our bags right? really it's like, we're, we're not saying anything. It's like, Martin, we've got to get that shit out of your bag somehow. And it, the the police were like, oh, we'll take you to the bus station so you can get, like, go back to Bangkok. It's like, right. <laughs> to just, so we're in the back of this, this pickup. They take us up. We get on the bus to Bangkok. We get a ticket, get on. We get off the bus at Bangkok. And part of the thing with... Um, it was within five years in Thailand, if I broke um, any law, I'd have to do, I think it's two months, because that would have been the sentence for what we did, plus whatever else had happened. The crime. A, a, yeah. a, a, accumulation. So as we got off the bus in Bangkok, this coppers in the car park, and we try and get one taxi and we couldn't get into it, and we're walking around looking for another one, and the coppers call us over oh. oh fucking hell and it that that was the most scared i was because yeah. at this point we're in bangkok so the bangkok hilton if mm. you know i mean it's a total different mm. level of, of of something there so we go over and they're looking through our bags and I just start talking to the blokes incessantly. So I've got some dollars I need to show. Where can I get them changed at and stuff like that, knowing mm. it's in Martin's bag. Luckily, Martin's bag was in two bits. So he just threw it on the floor, unzipped the top bit and started pulling it, still not knowing where the stuff was, but pulling stuff out. It's like, just close, just close. And they're looking around and the therapist away. He's got essential oils in the... They're like, what's this? Like, smell it. They're like, oh, no. It's like, no, no, it's lavender. <laughs> And like I say, that's the, the, the most scary moment of of the lot. And I think, it, I, you've seen the film Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Mm -hmm. Do you know when he loses all the money in the, and he's in the boxing yeah. ring and everything goes just, all... Yeah, everything's just melting around him, yeah. It, it was like that. It was mm. just so, like, what the hell is going on? And, like, luckily they didn't find it. We just jumped into the next taxi that came, went to Koh San Ro, got a hotel... And it was literally right, Martin. You flush that. I've got to go and email because I've been off email for twenty eight days. Yeah. So I mean, lo looking at it, I should have known I'd be all right because I grew up watching Porridge, Prisoner, Cell Block H, and Tenko. Ronnie so Barker. That, uh, Ronnie Barker. Yeah. So that gave me me the training and the knowledge of the prison that I needed. But the amount of weed they caught us with was two point eight grams, less than an eighth. And that's what's fucking mad. So be careful if you get a Thailand, guys, because you can smoke out there. But if you get caught, offer to pay a fine to the person yeah. that catches you. Yeah. Because I don't regret it. It's a hell of an experience. Exactly. Great and it story. was doing that that made me realise... I mean, if you'd have had 2.8 kilos, it's a completely different yeah, thing, isn't it? But yeah, yeah that, essentially, that's the long way around a load of fucking about for... A couple of grams of, yeah. of yeah. tie stick. 